So there are three different kinds of work. Of course there are more, but we're going to just have three different main categories. And these categories relate a lot to your class. See, the, the lower class of work relates to working class or lower class. <clears throat> well, the upper class of work relates to the upper class, for example. Now, what are they simply? Well, the lower class is essentially any kind of maintenance, repair, -all, survival, any kind of resource, uh, resource accumulation, production, uh, manufacturing, etc. In your life, this means things like you know, uh, showering and brushing your teeth and brushing your hair, um, cooking food, cleaning your house, fixing your house, uh, tending to the garden, etc. Making furniture if you do that. Gathering, I don't know, maybe you, you live on a large space of land and you gather rocks or dirt or wood or you know, what happen, whatever it happens to be. These are all lower level things, right? Middle level is more social stuff. Now work we can kind of define as an application of pressure or application of effort to something, someone, whatever. And then once it gets higher, it gets more abstract and complex. So the middle is more social work and this is more your job because your job is a thing to society, it's a work towards society. Even if your job is fixing houses, which you know, fi fixing houses is a lower level thing or farm or whatever, it's still a duty to society or you know, service to society. Um, family, managing a family, you, you, you know, it's, it is work to manage a family. Um, you have to kind of you know, be on track of everyone in your family, you need to know everyone. You need to um, set up the events and such. You know, every maybe once a year you meet up, or maybe you meet up every season. And then it depends on different, different how you know, how big your family is, on wh which people of your family you meet up with. All this kind of management stuff. You know, if you raise children, um, or if you have to take care of your you know, grandparents or parents. Um, or nieces, nephews, etc. So caring jobs. These are these are things that are in the middle as well. Um, so yeah, any really anything to do with social, society, caring, etc. These are all kind of in the middle. Then up the top is the higher work. This is related to intellect and creativity. So education, anytime you're learning, it's a higher level of work. Contrast, um, you know, I don't know, working in the, the, um, the backyard of the field, which is a lower level. Uh, anytime you're doing scientific work, so scientific practice, study, engineering, um, creative work as well, you can think that it's kind of like you've got the lower level trades. I mean, you've got the trades and then you have the higher level arts. And um, the trades, you know, things of, of working with, with earth, working with water, the elements, working with fire, working with gases or airs, and working with electricity. You know, electricity being an electrician, uh, the higher level of that being an electrical engineer, for example. Um, etc. And then you can think the high level of is art, so working with the visual, um, illustration and such, working with feeling, so modeling, uh, sculpting, etc. Working with audio, which is music. So you can see these are these kind of relate in that art is, is similar to trade in a way, it's just that trade is more the body, um, you know, the lower body. Well, well, art and I guess science is more the head. That's how it relates to the body, because all these things relate to the body. But anyway, so your higher work is also spirituality. So any kind of priestcraft, shamanic stuff, uh, spiritual work, so meditation and prayer and and all that kind of stuff. That is all higher work. So yeah you can kind of think of your your life and your work in these three main categories and of course they, they are relations i mean there are 
things in the middle. For example, this work is because I'm talking, I'm using your know, higher level stuff, and because it's a audio visual internet kind of presentation, I guess you would say, or video, it's more higher level, but because it's a service to society, um, and it's also related to a commercial venture, it is a kind of middle higher thing. So it's like that, that throat chakra, you know, which is kind of, it's, it's technically the throat, you know, it's the higher, but it's in between, you know, the middle realm and the higher realm. So take that for what it is. And you can also have things which are in between the lower and the middle. Um, selling stuff, for example, that you produce would probably be a, you know, related to lower and middle, maybe, I don't know, something like that. Anyway, that's all for this one. As far back in history, in the lowest level of technology, you would be valued by your raw abilities. If you're a man, it's your ability to hunt and kill an animal, to kill other men and you know, threats that start to, you know, try to attack your tribe or your people or whatever. If you're a woman, you would need to know how to care for people and raise them. You, you need to know how to navigate socially. These are very raw, basic things. Eventually, of course, life complexified. Eventually, you, I mean, yeah, eventually you had to learn how to preserve meat because the golden ages were over. There weren't always, it wasn't always warm and sunny. Winter came essentially, and you had to learn how to, you know, smoke and make sausages and can and um, dry things or whatever. And eventually, people had to learn how to, you know, grow foods and harvest materials and they, they improve the technology as such. In maybe the industrial era, a good quality was being able to work. So we have different eras. And then maybe in the last kind of era, the 60s, you know, the 80s and such, it wasn't just, it wasn't a factory era anymore. I think maybe the early 19th century, late 18th century was more of a factory era. Eventually it converted to more of a businessy kind of era and then technology became a thing for example if you were very good at technology in the early uh, 2000s 2010s you probably would have made a lot of money people who bought Bitcoin who made websites people who got into social media marketing early and um, solidified themselves having a presence online Different, what I'm trying to say is different eras had different things you needed to do. Caveman eras, you know. If you were a man, as I said, you just, you needed to be strong and quick and really in body. And if you're a woman, you need to be very, you know, again, uh, I guess really in body as well, right? To be able to you know, nurture physically. Well, in more medieval times, it was more slightly more intelligence was used, you know, assuming, you know, let's just take, you know, alternate history outside and just have, you know, mainstream, uh, probably fake, but whatever history, you know, you needed a bit more intelligence, I guess, it wasn't just pure strength, you needed to know the seasons, to know when to plant and such. Similarly, as a woman, you, you had a, a bigger network of people, a village, a village is bigger bigger than a tribe. You, know, you had to learn how to sell things, I guess. Um, you know, women usually were in charge of, of markets. They women ruled the markets, men ruled the woods, as they, as you could probably say. So different traits were necessary. Now, what I'm seeing in the future is that, or the present, I guess, is that. Robots and AI are essentially taking over the labor. The same way that I immigrants took over most of the lower level labor. And then slowly when they had children, 
their children grew up and have now taken over the middle and higher level things. And now you have immigrants who are bankers, doctors, scientists, lawyers. They, they encompass all spectrums of the you know, field. Now robots, as we can see, have taken over some lower level laboring positions. Um, if, you, if you look at the supermarkets that have the robots that, that have the, the, you know, the self-serve checkout, <clears throat> that has taken over a, somewhat of a middle lower level position, a social position I guess you could say. If you think about like pizza shops, or, or whatever food shops, you know, just general food shops. Probably places like McDonald's, you know, fast food chains, um, will be the first ones to try this and do this. But the use of robots, automatic drink robot machines, are probably pretty easy. Um, frying or chip frying robots, you know, pizza making robots. I mean, already in. In Asia, there's some interesting stores which use robots to cook their food. If you look that up, um, so manufacturing, of course, is an obvious one, has been mostly made, you know, taken over by machines. I think more and more it will be the it will be a, you know, you can think there was like a, a time where a whole village was required to do something, and then it was you know a group, and then it was a few people. And now it's just like kind of one person. Eventually these food shops will be ran by like one person or maybe like three people you know, for a big food shop. Tra transportation and, um, and like mail, you can, again robots, you can use robots. So the idea is that we are entering the era of, of where robots have taken, basically they have taken labor. Um, and what is there for, for us to do? Of course, how do we make money? Uh, I don't know about you, but you know, the idea of everyone being on welfare, it's not exactly a good idea. Of course, there are people who will go back to the land, learn to grow potatoes and, and the chickens and all that. And that's one way to do it. But already, you know, it's like when immigrants came in, finding a job became very difficult, um, especially if you just wanted something simple. Because there's a 10 immigrants for every one person who wanted it. And then robots came in and more people lost their jobs. I imagine creativity um, will be required for the future. Technological skills relating to Mercury were required, maybe from the era of the 90s to around 2020. That was for the Mercury era in a way, where technology and computers and websites and all this stuff was very important and very big and a great way to make money and, and a great skills to learn. During that time, you should have learnt programming, you should have learnt how computers work and all that stuff. For example, um, integrated them in your business. Though, of course, there are plenty of people and businesses that are quite slow and still integrating computers into their business. And, of course, it'll still continue to happen. So maybe we can stretch that time frame to 2030, I don't know. But either way, there will be an era next after that, which is coming. And that will be the way that people, you know, make money and do things and whatever. <laughs> Maybe some kind of computer into or like, yeah, like virtually integrated way, as in when, um, you know, computers and, and the virtual world's integrated into just mundane reality. There'll be things like, like a, kind of like the old quest idea or like an adventurer's guild where you just 
people, you know, it's like, I need to do this, I need someone to do this, or whatever, it's just like there. I mean, gig work, technically, I guess, is that, um, technically, we are kind of in that gig work era. Yeah. Rest in peace, having a uh, livable wage, sadly, but uh, it was gig work. So, um, what comes after that? Um, do, do we just become like the slave of a mega corporation that, you know, gives us a pittance for, I don't know, harvesting data and biomaterial? Well, I hope not. Um, hopefully there's something better. You know, hopefully there's some way to make money, some legitimate way. Because otherwise, again, we, we basically just have to go back to living off the land and everything resets, you know. We, we do another, do another 200 year reset. Which, you know, I don't really want to do. I mean, I actually, I don't know. I kind of like the internet, even if it's, you know, terrible in some ways, even if it's destroyed us in some ways. I don't know. I feel like the way is forward and through, you know. Otherwise, maybe we'll all be like either resorted to having to be hyper specialized people. <sighs> I don't know, man. And then there's like that small middle ground of people who just mow yards and fix shit up and I don't know. But even then, like, will robots take that over? I mean, eventually they'll take over everything that's labor based. Maybe we switch out of a money based society and move into something else. But of course, money's always going to be there. You always need something that represents money or energy physically and you know, digitally and such. So, yeah, I don't know. Something. I notice that around or on the full moon, animals usually get possessed. Now, what is possession? And let's, let's understand that. What I think it is, at least, is that usually it relates to mostly the nerves and the brain, and I think also the water of the body acts as like a resonator. If you look up ideas of radio and radio transmission, radio is received, I believe, by water, mercury, for example. Um, I remember this one time I was at an audio convention and apparently the speakers were picking up FM radio or some other kind of radio like songs and music that was being transmitted because of the cables, the thick cables that the speakers use which attaches them to I imagine their power source or some other piece of electronics. They actually picked up the radio through these probably insulated wires. You can think of your spinal cord and your nerves as one of these wires. It's picking up frequency. What frequency? Probably radio, I'm not sure. It could also depend. It could be a lower frequency for the lower parts of the nerves and a higher frequency for the higher parts of the nerves. And then also the brain, maybe that has a, has a different frequency. It could be ultra high frequency or it could be a different kind of electromag a different kind of energy in general. Maybe it's not electromagnetic, maybe it's something else. Of course we know the brain, you know, from what it seems like it does use electromagnetic energy, but you know, it's just some thoughts. So essentially Possession and, you know, bad spirits in the body and such I find is that if you are exhausted, especially nervous system wise exhausted, um, you can have a tendency for bad thoughts, bad, you know, ideas and premonitions and all this kind of stuff, bad imaginations and actions and such to kind of try to enter you, try to penetrate you. Um, and if you have, uh, for example, a bad area of the body, you will have a 
a possession um, or, or kind of like in, in like shows how you see a little like a bad little spirit like an evil bunny rabbit or something a little goblin ghost that is attached to someone's shoulder or to their back or something and then the the priest or the magician or whatever banishes that from their body or takes it on within themselves you can think that that area of the body's aura specifically the nervous system or again the muscular system being just bodies of water essentially the bones also being kind of like a resonator so it's the whole body but if we understand more the nervous system, I think that makes it more easier to understand because it relates to electronics. Um, so an area of the body essentially is ill and because of that it gets attacked by bad frequency, bad energy. And then this, you know, a bad evil spirit which it kind of becomes its own entity so to speak, but is it really its own entity or is it more like an ocean? As in, the ocean tries to leak into the holes of the boat. It's not that the, the water in the boat is this entity in itself, it's more just leaking in. I think it's a bit of both and it can be, you know, it can be both because people, for example, bad thoughts of people or people that are trying to attack you psychically will worm their way in through these weak regions of the body. Physically as well, if they're trying to scam you or annoy you or fight you or whatever, but the same way that they'll, you know, instinctively seek out your weaknesses and try to attack you through that. Um, you can breathe in bad spirits as well, interestingly enough. If you, for example, are vulner in a vulnerable state and you inhale, you could do that. Now, going on with animals and full moon, I think the moon, the full moon, is very energetic. It's very um, in a psychic way, and it kind of stimulates the animals, and it's like their nervous systems and brains are being hijacked. And you'll notice when an animal is possessed, usually they'll do some kind of repetitive behavior, like they'll bark or chirp. Or, or just try to be very annoying and they'll just keep doing it until their physical body is exhausted because the body's trying to exhaust and trying to just it's, it's like it's being invaded by this bad frequency and certain animals allow themselves to be possessed so much that they turn into what we might think of as a demonic animal apparently animals can also do the opposite where they can become a more angelic animal and they can gain abilities, you know, psychic abilities and evolve themselves and such. I've never seen it, but you know, it's an interesting concept. So they'll do strange behavior that doesn't seem to be like normal or in their pattern. Usually it's just, it's an outburst of, of aggression or emotion or, or something like that or some kind of strange, it's just weird, like walking around. Um, dogs will leave the house and they'll go on, you know, adventure outwards and then be found days later. Um, stuff like that, I guess. People are affected by this as well, by the full moon. Usually whatever's, I guess you can also say whatever the darkness is within a human will um, be given form. It'll kind of, the, the energy will give it form and it'll start to try to attack or invade the person or, you know, play that out, so to speak. So you have to be careful that way. Um, hmm. So I guess the um, full moon, maybe it does seem to hyper stimulate the brain and nervous system. So brain possession, for example, that's more nervous system, which is lower possession, more passive. I guess brain possession um, or consciousness possession would be, again, possession of the consciousness when someone loses their head. You know, it's like losing your head to anger um, or not being yourself for, for a minute. You know, we've all had experiences where we may have done something stupid. 
Um, maybe it was just your hand that did something stupid. You touched something you weren't meant to. Um, or maybe it was both. It was your, your mind and your hand. Or maybe your body did something stupid. You went somewhere you're not meant to. And then you kind of come back to reality. That's a, that's a minor form of possession. You were overtaken by another spirit and you weren't strong enough to withstand it. Usually as you age and as you develop spiritually, you'll have more defense to this. Of course, you can train yourself just by training your body or training yourself spiritually, you know, through meditation and, and certain exercises to avoid this. Um, also knowing and learning about it, noticing when you or others are possessed because it's quite annoying if you're around people who are possessed. Especially if they, again, similarly how I said, like with the animal that allows itself to become possessed so much that it becomes a demon. Humans can also become demonic people. It's kind of like we all probably know about that one neighborhood or one bad area of town or one bad shop or whatever that always has demonic bad energy there. And it seems like everyone there or everything there is strange and bad and you know you always you come out there worse than you would have um, if you hadn't gone there and the people seem to be ill um, and they seem to do strange things etc anyway so I guess just look up about radio waves um, sympathetic resonance like if you hit a guitar string of the same um, tuning it'll start to cause a ringing in another string um, I think you can control people their nervous system their body and their mind by magic uh, I mean I've had some experiences where I've done it implanting thoughts into people's heads that then manifested I haven't gotten to the point where I can just puppeteer someone's arm, but that would be interesting, or leg or whatever. But to do that, you simply just possess them, you just focus on them, and you feel their body out. Kind of like if you were healing them or scanning their body. If you, if you ever know about that, you just focus on a person's body and their energy. And you try to feel it out, and you, try, you can also look at it in your imagination. If you know how to feel it, you can kind of look at what you're feeling, so to speak. And see the energy that way but anyway then you just kind of focus on their arm and you know stimulate it and try to you know maybe try to make it feel like it's burning or whatever or it's cold or, or try to push it up or down and once your mind and magic is strong enough then you can probably you know control people that way until you get to the point where you could quite literally possess them and you can see through their eyes and talk through their mouth and overcome their spirit to the point that you become them and they die so something that I calling circulation patterns for example if I told you to feel the root of your body and then make a line through your body, through your torso, and your belly, your torso, your neck, your head, to the top of your body, kind of like the Tai Chi pole in the body, or central pillar, and just to hold that focus, that's a circulation pattern, because it'll stimulate that in the body, and then I tell you to make it go up, to like, you know, send the, to make the energy go up, so it's like a line, and like got upward arrows, you know, it's like kind of going upwards continuously in a flow. or going downwards now, right? Again, circulation pattern. And you can make patterns, you can make lines in the center. So you could have the belly, and then you could have the belly going to your arms. So it's like you got a line from your belly to around the chest, and from the chest it splits to left and the right arm to your palms, we'll say. And then it's continuously from your belly, the energy is going to your arms and your palms. 
you know, because it's going that in that direction or that flow. So that's the circulation pattern. You can make up your own for exercises or whatever. And yeah, interesting con uh, concept. Another one is on kind of the organs and the senses or whatever, and how it relates a bit to personality, and also the idea of like uh, not really selling your soul, but almost selling parts of yourself or, or making parts of yourself kind of evil or dark or, or negative or whatever and temp and also making other parts of yourself light or, or like positive you know however you want to think another way is to say like down regulating or up regulating parts and then passively um feeding the energy of certain senses into certain other parts i'll give you an example there's this idea of um it's like certain a group of people who traded their stomach their I mean not stomach stomach but like their belly their or, or solar plexus basically their will they traded their will for mind so their circulation pattern was like trading the the I don't know if it was the belly or the actual solar plexus which is above the belly a little bit they trade they basically fed that energy continuously into the mind <clears throat> to gain wisdom and that would have created a specific culture specific you know feeling within them it's like different cultures and different races and all that you know look different because their 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 circulation pattern is different you know some cultures are super physically strong some are really smart others are like really good at business and some are just really socially good all all kinds of you know once you map out the faculties of humans, then you can kind of understand this and such. So it's interesting to look into your own body. What, like, what, is, what naturally is feeding into what? What areas of the body, like, is is the just say someone who's really stunted creatively, have they traded their creativity? Is it very down regulated, very weak? Or maybe someone who's very creative, is it very strong? And you can also have people who have like dark aspects, for example, the heart. Maybe someone has a very open and loving and heart and they're very friendly and all that. Or they're very mean and they, they, they hate people and they despise them. And maybe um, that's turned dark, for example. Again, the, the intelligence, maybe their intelligence has um, become evil, you know. Again, use whatever word you want. Um, so it's it's all, all they're using their intelligence for good, or again they they're using their they're transmuting the energy from their mind lower, uh, maybe for their creativity or maybe for their their physical like, nutrition. It's really up to you what you want to do. There is no better or worse. There is just what you need to do, what you want to do. Um, what kind of comes naturally, I guess. But anyway, that's that's like how you can understand yourself and people and all kinds of things. We're, we're all kind of unique in that way. And that's how you create like custom energy practices, energy cultivation practices um, through this through this stuff. And I mean, you could like you know selectively control how people develop in that way if you really wanted to you know, do some mad scientist type shit. <laughs> so I've definitely noticed at least the last month that of September that is that we've entered, I believe a recession or we've been in it, probably entered it maybe two months ago, I don't know. And I've noticed definitely that a lot of businesses you can kind of you can kind of feel the lack of, um, you know, money being exchanged, so to speak. It hasn't hit the middle class or the upper class. I think it's starting to hit the lower class, definitely, with, you know, price of living and such. Uh, usually, I don't think recessions really hit the upper class that much. It's kind of, I see it like a wave. And those on the lower part of the building get 
you know, washed with water. Those in the middle, they get a little bit washed, and those at the top, not really. Um, I figure if you have a, you know, if, if you can get any side jobs or anything, it's good to do that. Definitely, if you can save anything, you know, do that. Hopefully, you already have some savings. That would be good, smart idea. Um, I don't think it's going to get to the point where you know savings will not be valid, as in my currency gets completely wiped out. But if you look at the U.S. dollar compared to every other, you know, dollar, euro, etc. Wow, <laughs> quite impressive how much certain currencies are dropping. Um, you could honestly, if you don't live in America, you could put your money in US dollars as like a stock, and you probably would, you know, have made 20% in the last few months of whatever money you have. It's that, that, um, that you know, good, I guess. Um, so, yeah, if you can get money in US dollars, that's not a bad idea, just because it trades so well. So, anything online. But of course, I don't think we're in the absolute peak of it yet. I wish we were, because I want this over and done with. It's uh, not good so far. I'm, I'm wondering, at least in my country, we are we're kind of in that period of spring where it still hasn't warmed up yet. It's still got another about month or two till it warms up. So I think by December things will ease up a little bit, hopefully, um, in time for Christmas, you know. But otherwise, October might be a bit tough. Though I, I think if you've gotten used to it over the last month, um, you know, I don't know what, what, what work you do, what whatever. So it's going to be different depending on your life, at least I've found in mine, you know, the way I make money, it's, it's like, I make maybe, jeez, like, 10, 20% of what I used to, so it's, it's that, you know, at least in my areas and such, even though I've moved, I, I, I didn't move, but I, you know, went, I've been going to the, the local city area, um, to work, and it's just, it, even there, there's nothing, there's just nothing, there's, you know, so yeah, it's pretty rough. Um, worst case, I mean, you know, just buy a couple, buy five, ten kilos of rice and beans, you know. Um, if it gets to the point where food and all that's that hard, and then just have to, you know, make some things from scrap or whatever in the meantime. Uh, but otherwise, you know, sheesh. Guess it was going to happen eventually, you know. Print all that money and um, you know, screw with the economy so much, and eventually just falls. But you know, hopefully things will you know, get better in a couple of months. Recently, I've been noticing more and more the duality between the inner and the outer world. Now, if you sit, you are engaging in the inner world. If you lay or sleep or something, even more so, you're further internal. Your energy goes inside of your body, inside your organs. Now, if you're standing or running or doing some kind of external action, your energy is going out of the body. You get hotter, etc. What I'm wondering about is specifically video games, but also it would extend to any virtual experience where you can apply effort. Social media, for example, would be another example. What happens if you play a lot of video games or what happens if you engage in social media and you treat it like the gym where you go there and you train and you, you know, maybe you have a little bit of fun, but you go there and you train and get better. I remember I used to play a lot of games as a kid, you know, video games. I was never good at sports because I was never physically good until I trained enough physically to be okay. And I think because I played a lot of games, it made me smarter in a mercurial sense. I wasn't exactly, you know, 
intelligent in engineering or science or language or anything other that kind of way but I was just very you know my head was developed so to speak kind of like someone who just generally does a lot of exercise has a generally developed body and they're just generally better at physical things I was just generally better at mental things and I think it was partly due to playing games in games you have to think a lot you have to strategize and plan it puts you a lot in your head and your internal senses now social media as well I could see as similar I think you can vaguely develop social skills on social media. Now it's not quite like talking to people in real life. And funny enough actually, I remember I developed a lot of social skills in real life to the point where social media was more difficult and I had to spend about a year or two learning how to, you know, not be uncomfortable on social media and to get to a kind of a nice point funny enough while in real life you know i i would it'd be fine i'd be comfortable just because i practiced it so it's kind of uh, interesting you know people think if you do something on a computer it means you're lesser or if you do something internal you know it's a lesser thing or it's worse or whatever and then everything external is good but it's not quite the case there are positives and negatives in both um and you have to practice both if you want to be good at both. Though, of course, you know, the general gist of things, you know, just talking to people to get better at talking to people is a thing that'll work on social media. You just talk to people, except instead of talking to meat bodies, you're talking to ethereal voices or, or you know, text and, and some visual and these windows, you know. Uh, screens and such. Now, video, go back, going back to video games, I think they train the nervous system quite a lot, the mind and the nervous system, so which is basically one of the faculties of the inner world. The mind, which is brain, and the nervous system. At least these are the physical organs. I mean, the physical ma manifestations of them. Um, Games became very hard, I noticed. I think when I got past the age of about 16, I lost somewhat interest. Um, and then when I got past the age of maybe about 19, 20 or something, I stopped playing them because I thought it was a waste of time. And then I, re I really didn't play them much for probably like three, four years. And I then went back and when I did get back to games, I noticed that they were very, very difficult. Just because I was so rusty, I hadn't played them for a while. And it took me years to really kind of get back to, you know, being any good at them. <clears throat> and some genres I'm just not very good at. Like, I'm not very good at action things, you know. I'm more, if, if it's a slow, turn-based you know, strategy or something, it's a little bit better for me. Um, but something that's, you know, action, I always found difficult, personally. Getting back to it, I'm wondering, could you you know, play a bunch of games and overcome struggles and stress and tribulations and trials and such and take that to the real world. And that's really what I wonder. I think so. I think so. I guess it's kind of like how could you take social media and get good on that and then take that to the real world. I mean, I yes, in a way. Ultimately, anything you do develops you and developing yourself makes you better at anything else and everything else becomes easier if you've developed yourself. This is kind of how life works. So, um, I don't know. It's an interesting thought to bring validity to the, you know, use of games, I guess. Or you could use them in a way to, you know, train your, your inner world or your nerves or whatever. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. I noticed that there are two main classes of drugs which are legal in most societies, which is the stimulants, which is kind of like tobacco, coffee, um, etc. And the more depressants, which is alcohol and painkillers. Now, this I think relates to masculine and feminine energies. Stimulants being more masculine and you know, painkillers and alcohol being feminine. 
um, I find, you know, on the, the, the feminine drugs, it's more of like a relaxation thing. It's like, you know, it makes your body expand and grow, etc. Makes your energy go downwards more to the bones and such. While the stimulants will um, draw from the bones, they'll raise the energy up. You won't be able to sleep. They will stimulate you for work. And it can be interesting to see what kind of person gets addicted to them. Usually you would think, you know, usually I guess you would assume that men would be more addicted to stimulants and women would be more addicted to depressants. And I think it does work that way, at least from what I see. Uh, smoking for women, or, I mean, women more would drink coffee if they were going to use a stimulant, I find. Um, drinking something, again, is a feminine thing. Smoking something is a more masculine because it's, it's uh, air, the air element and fire is related to you know, the masculine, the water and earth is uh, feminine. Just interesting little thing. So a pill is an earth, is related to the earth element by the way, while you know, a drink of course is related to the water. And men um, smoke a lot more I find. It's definitely, it's not a good thing for your health, especially as a woman if you smoke. Not good for your fertility, which is, you know, the feminine kind of parts of the body. Um, just as a side note, you know, it's one of those things that's really not good. But, it's like if you're a man and you drink too much, or you take too many painkillers or whatever. You know, painkillers are actually a big thing um, for like working class kind of guys or you know, men don't have to work or whatever because they're, they're in pain from their job and um, you know, they kind of sit around on painkillers and all that. It's like a bad addiction so that's an interesting thing. Um, but anyway, I was noticing how those substances relate to, again, the energy forces and that relates to men and women. If you're around a lot of men, it's very stimulating. Especially the younger the men is, the more stimulating and more masculine. Well, the older and yeah, the older the man, the more slower, the more earthly. As you can think. Younger women are more fiery, more stimulating as well. Or older women again, more earthly. So it just kind of works that way. But women, yeah, it's kind of like you know related to the feminine energy, or it relates like alcohol. Or, Again, as I said, depressants, it's, it's more that, that physically building, nurturing, um, moisturizing, you know, expanding, swelling kind of energy. Women, you know, they want to, they kind of pull things down, they pull conversations down. You know, if you, if you are around women, they will, um, they bring weight almost to things, so to speak. They don't really want to be as active. And they're active in their own way, you know, through conversation, I guess you could say, but um, they don't really run around like men do, or, you know, you know, it's animated. So it's more of a you know, heavier feeling. Well, men, as I said, it's more of a lighter, you know, fiery, like if a man tries to you know, roast you or, or like banter. I personally hate banter. FYI, but you know, so it's, it's more fiery thing, or, or a man's trying to motivate you, you know, like to, to um, play a game or to do some kind of exercise or whatever. Um, it's a different force, so I guess it's, a, it's similar to a stimulant. You, know, you smoke tobacco, and it's, I mean, again, the true nature of yin and yang is paradoxical or it's cyclical, so you know, you smoke tobacco on it. Um, ices you out. <laughs> it actually acts as a painkiller. It's funny. Um, you know, I found tobacco was a better painkiller than painkilling pills. You know, it's not that I use any of them, but you know, <laughs> that's what I found when I was younger. Is that um, 
I guess the opiate effect you get off it. So it's it's paradoxical, I guess. Well, sometimes it's like, just say if you're in pain, you take a painkiller and then you can do things and you can be stimulated because you're in so much pain that it's like, well, you just couldn't really do anything. So again, it's, it's as I said, it's, it's opposite. Every, there's an opposite in everything. I guess it's like this gold and lead and lead and gold, so to speak, in that manner. <laughs> Um, hmm. Yeah, so I guess you can think like if you are addicted or you're feeling that addictive sensation to like alcohol, sugar, or the opposite, like you know, stimulants, or, or you want to be around men or around women, you, know, you want the love of a woman or the love of a man or whatever, or the companionship or something, or you want to hear them talk or whatever. Just think like that's the energy you want to break it down to like you know more of an energy thing. That's like what you are craving at that moment. You might be craving stimulation or, or you know, heat or fieriness if it's masculine, or you might be craving just relaxation of cold and you know, moisture if it's feminine. So you can kind of understand that or more, you know, your 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 needs and wants and cravings and desires and stuff through, you know, gender polarity. Anyway, that's it for this one. So here's the thought. Let's take the idea of the thousand or the hundred year old ginseng and reishi mushroom. Because ginseng and reishi mushroom are probably two of the most prized herbs in the Chinese herbal tradition. You mix them together and you take them. More or less they can be used for any purpose because it's basically a pure energy and you know, like a chi powder, like a spiritual herbal powder. Very good. And there's this idea about like hundred year old ginseng or reishi which has been growing for a hundred years. Right? or even a thousand years. And really, there's an idea that like any herb that has grown for so long becomes magical. Magical in a way that like it probably glows. You, f you walk around it and you feel something special. You make it into a medicine and you're or like a pill or whatever and you eat it and you gain a lot of its power and it it levels you up essentially because you're gaining that hundred years of you know, herbal cultivation now why exactly how does this work you know, why is it quote unquote magical what does that mean let's try to break down how this actually works so a herb or a plant or whatever animal gathers energy passively. Humans volatilize their energy a lot more. Animals volatilize it because we move, we do things. Herbs gather it more. Minerals gather it a lot. So it gathers this energy, which is, you know, minerals, sun water, air, electromagnetism, where does it store it? How does it store it? Well, I think it's kind of like it stores it in a mineral form, probably. If you've like looked at enough plants and barks and whatever, you can see that they look like certain things. Some woods look really fatty. If you look up that beautiful red wood, it looks like it's like it is blood red and it looks like fat or oil or something. It's weird. It's really cool. Some woods are crystalline. Or some herbs are very crystalline. And I imagine that means that it's stored up a lot of nutrients. 
I think if you add a lot of minerals and nutrients to the soil, it's kind of like speeding up that process. So maybe you could make a, a hundred year ginseng in like 10 years from just really juicing up the soil. But ultimately the idea was that you have to store energy physically. Unless the plant literally starts to practice like internal energy cultivation and it builds energy centers. But even then it will build some kind of mineral crystal within it. Or some kind of you know pearl or whatever like that. So that's my hypothesis. Um, hypothetically, a plant could like change colors, or it could, you know, evolve if it grew that long. Because it's just, you know, it's just leveling up and leveling up and leveling up. Maybe it could become kind of conscious as well. Kind of like I don't know if I I think I spoke about the idea of the animal spirit here, you know, the um, like the kits and the spirits or kind of yokai and like the Japanese law. I think there's another word from I don't remember that um become they, they like become conscious and become like intelligent like humans through just age and, and experience and energy, you know. Like the, the the animal that's in a weird ley line or something gets super powerful. It's kind of similar to that, but the plant version of that. And then I guess a demigod, and I guess maybe even a god is a human who's achieved that kind of um, cultivation. Basically just level, like mad level up. So it's leveling up like crazy. From all the nutrients and energy and whatever. Yeah, what else do we have on that? So basically just minerals and crystals and such. Uh, hypothetically, what would the crystals be? Assumingly whatever is around, but maybe it like transmutes it into like higher and higher forms so it becomes like gold crystals and it becomes some whatever beyond gold, etc. I don't know, something like that. But in a human, you'd look into like the bones, wouldn't you? And also into the muscles, maybe, just whatever physical. And you do also the complexification of it. So it's also the structure, potential. It's like when muscles get more complicated, they get, you know, and you can see someone who's like super developed, who's done a bunch of calisthenics, and their muscles look weird as. They look so. It's like muscles have muscles upon muscles, and that's weird. That's cool. Um, so, I guess structure, mineral, or physical ingredient, material, I guess, uh, those are two main ways to store power, maybe. I don't know, something like that. I always like to think that life itself is like the ultimate test of reality because it sounds kind of obvious if you jump then you can only jump as high as you can jump if you get what I mean you can only sing as beautifully or as high pitch and low pitch as you are able to and physical material physical material physical reality matter itself, you know, the, the earth element is the restricting force which says you're only allowed to do this much or it says you've done this much. Um, now the reality of life is that if you practice and train things which is a good way to get better at something, you learn about stuff, you train, you practice, you work, etc. I mean really what, else, what other way is there? going to be real, um, that you only get as much experience as you can get. I find you get like one point of experience for every 10 points of work. Meaning that if you do a hundred points of work, your uh, yeah, I'm going to skip the math on that one. Let's just say you get better slower than the work you put in, but you know, 
I guess you could say the secret of getting good at things is, is like work times time. That equals eff or effort times time is, is the result. Anyway, getting to the main point, basically, um, if you are not happy at what you are getting from life, you have to put in more work or you have to work more effectively you know, hey, say you work smarter, not harder. Sometimes you do have to do that. Sometimes you just genuinely have to put in more hours. Sometimes you have to get more people on the job. You know, it's all these things. Um, but either way, the you know, just more work, work harder. You know, all the main the main idea is just if you're not getting what you want, you're not putting in what you need to put in or you're not experienced enough, the more, maybe we'll say this, all right? All right, so like you work for an hour and you gain one bit of work, I don't know, something like that. If you work for 10 hours, then eventually you gain 1.1 bits of work and eventually you gain two, two bits of work. So you basically doubled the speed of which you are working, right? Or you make the work more, um, you know, better, you make it better, make it more detailed, which is, I talked about that in another, another video, so I won't repeat it. But what I'm saying is like, if you look at your work and you think, you look at your life and you think, wow, you know, you know my, my house is not as good as I want it to be. It's not as clean. It's not as fixed up. It's not as, you know, whatever. You have to put more work in, you know, realistically. You have to get better at that. If you look at, um, you know, whatever thing you do, you may, maybe you make music or something. It's like, it's, music isn't good enough, you know, realistically. And of course, as you age and get better, you'll just kind of see the faults and things more and things, you know, and funny enough, you'll appreciate some things more and you'll also see the faults more and it's, you know, it's kind of, it is what it is. But you just have to put more work in. You have to somehow get more effort, more energy. That's what you're doing through working as you are. You are holding a lightning rod in your right hand, uh, actually the left hand, because the left hand's more, you know, like that. You're holding, well, it depends on your energy, actually. You're holding a lightning rod with your left hand, and you are channeling that lightning through you using your right hand. You're pointing it down, kind of like the Baphomet symbol image or whatever, and you are materializing energy. Work is just a product of materialized energy, to put it one way. So whatever, you know, if you do, like, for example, arts, I think, are the kind of mental constructive things, while trades are like the more physical constructive things, you know, arts, you know, music, um, visual arts, writing, sculpting, etc., whether they be online or offline, you know, on computer or not, it's kind of comparable to like trades, which is, you know, uh, plumbing, electricity, mason work, um, etc., woodwork, etc., metalwork, blah, blah, blah. These are like just creative things. So anyway, you're, you're channeling energy into, and resources, of course, into, um, physical stuff and the more energy and resources you put in there and the more time usually the better it is or the more you know it is what you want it to be more and of course your experience so what i'm trying to say is like all those things will influence your work and i don't know about you i do things alone a lot of the time i'm trying to be a one-man band a one-man you know show and it means I have to put a lot more hours in, which I don't as much as I need to. I'll be honest, I don't put enough time um, into you know doing the things I need. And personally, that's because you know I fundamentally don't have the time or money or you know because I don't have the time because I don't have the money. It, it kind of always it comes back to time and money for me personally. Maybe it comes down to something different to you, like 
maybe you have to, you don't have enough time because you have relationships or because you have you know whatever commitments or maybe you just you know if you haven't like advanced your health and kind of freed up your time from wastes and such then then that can that can kind of hamper you it really it depends on what you do but um yeah i'm kind of coming to the idea that i really have to just spend a lot more time on things a lot more energy if i want to get anything done uh, i've been working on this one project for about a year now and i don't really want to start any others until i'm done with it and i'm be honest like for a year i really haven't done much um i mean i've done you know probably i don't know hundreds of hours or something i really don't know probably like that much a couple hundred hours you know. um so definitely there's work being done on it but what i'm trying to say is there's not enough being done there's not enough results and the harsh reality is if you don't produce enough result you need to put in more time or effort or hire people and again i don't want to hire people i like to learn everything myself do everything myself i don't want other people kind of like messing with my stuff Unless maybe if I teamed up someone and do some kind of project, you know, and we'll, we'll kind of we're friends and associates or whatever. But otherwise, um, I don't want to just hire random people. No, I mean I don't have the money for for most of it. Though admittedly, you can hire people pretty cheap. But I don't know, cheap work. You know, debatably if it's good, very debatably. So it is kind of like that. Um, Mm, yeah, I guess that's kind of it really. It's just you just realistically you just have to put more time in, more effort, more Yeah, if you want if you're not getting what you want, you have to gain more experience and all the things I said and just put more time. I'll leave it at that. I know when I get the feeling like it's difficult to make a video and then I'm gonna trigger a bunch of people that I probably should. <laughs> What does that mean I shouldn't? I don't know. But I get this I get this bad kind of shifty sense. Well, uh, I don't know. Look, I look at people younger than me who are in like higher positions as um, like a, oof, probably wouldn't want to be in that position, you know, being that young and stupid. But anyway, I, I see... Um, I mean, I don't see that much because I keep my head away from a lot of things, but I see young men trying to take a leadership position. And if you want to be some kind of coach or leader or whatever, don't let this dampen you, you know. You've got to gain your experience. It is what it is, you know. You've got to put yourself out there sometimes. But I see, like, if a person, you know, at my age, you know, just... I'm in my mid-20s, I'll put it that way. At my age... I still feel like a, like how could I coach someone, how could I mentor someone, unless it was a skill that I have that they wanted to learn, like they wanted to learn some kind of, I don't know, thing based in alchemy or energy work or whatever other things I do, sure, you know, I could help them, I could teach them, mentor, mentor some things, those skills I'm still, honestly, I'm still learning a lot of shit myself, you know, I don't, I don't think of myself as a master, I hardly even think of myself as an intermediate person in most of the things I do, I think I've reached like a semi or like a just it, you know, I, I call professional level is kind of like level 5 out of 10, right, level 10 is like grandmaster, so professional's not really special, you know? you've got People, most people are professionals and they just say shit at what they do and just is what it is. So I consider myself professional with a few skills just at the level where it's like, okay, maybe I can make money at this. Maybe I could start to work. And that's just the starting point of work. So, you know, we'll put it that way. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is the main point is like, don't follow blind masters or don't follow like people just because they got a lot of you know got a lot of like subscribers or followers or a lot of money or you know, a lot of this or that when they're probably not very experienced in life themselves they're probably not much more experienced than you or maybe they're less experienced than you i don't know 
what I'm trying to say is, you know, you don't really want to, like, think of a human as a god or, you know, put them too high on a pedestal. Um, as I said, you know, being in my mid-twenties, I still feel like uh, I, I, I'm kind of, like, seeing a point where I'm starting to understand life a little bit, but damn, like, I don't know, every year it's like, man, I thought I'd be the, at this point right now. And it's like, and then I notice how slow it is to advance. And I mean, sure, it is also the shitty time we're in and there's some other bad influences, but still, you know, it's, it's slow. It's very slow. And I realize how slow it is. And it's like 10 turns into 100 and 100 turns into 1,000. So what I'm trying to say is like, I still feel like I have like very little wisdom and very little experience in life. And um, if someone younger than me is trying to pose as like a mentor, a master or something, I'm just thinking, you know, really? Like, are you really qualified for that? And in some respects they are because they've experienced things that just say like a six year old person wouldn't have because it's a generational thing. Um, like, who am I to talk about millennials when I'm not a millennial? Who am I to talk about Gen X in in a way that to pretend like I'm just like, yeah, I'm a Gen X person. You know, I know, like, you, you better follow this, this, and that. And, you know, remember that his experience with that? It's like, no, I haven't had that. You know, I can observe and I can, you know, talk my opinion, but it's just like I'd probably be better at talking to someone who's a Gen Z person because that's the generation I've been in or in that kind of middle zone between Gen Z and Millennial. You know. I'd be better talking to those people just because that's what I've experienced. But man, being some kind of like God figure or mentor, like there's like a lot of, you know, there's, there's a lot of them out there on the internet. Um, we, like in spiritual, in the spiritual community, we had like the whole yoga, guru, like the whole guru kind of people, the master and all that shit that there was. And it's just always, you know, people got egos and some people like them fed by others. Personally, I'm of the opinion that most people are mouth breathing, drooling, Mentally deficient, um, smelly bastards, and I'm not exactly interested in being, you know, worshipped by them or fed my ego. Um, I just kind of got to that point where it's like, why do you want to be worshipped by people who uh, probably have trouble wiping their own ass? And I don't mean that from a medical standpoint, I mean that from me. They're that fucking stupid. But anyway, I'll, I'll uh, relax on the insults. You probably know what I mean, right? It just gets to that point where it's like, do you really want to be worshipped? Just do you really? I'm sure, yes, it feels okay. Yes, you magically get more women at you know, attracted to you until they figure out that you're kind of probably average. You know, it's like, eh, I don't know, man. Maybe I've just grown so comfortable in myself and appreciating myself in some regards that, I don't know, for me it's like the only thing that really makes me happy is achieving whatever weird goals that I have <laughs> in some regards, you know, maybe making money as well, that's all right, but really that's just so I get security and safety so I can, like, do whatever I want and eat food, <laughs> I don't know, just don't get manipulated by fucking cult leaders, um, or start joining culture. If you do, at least do it with the understanding that it's a cult, or that they're a cult leader, or that they're probably not that smart. They're just kind of propped up by personality and fame and all this stuff. Um, and I'm not talking about specific people. There's a few people I could think of. Um, not to say that they're all bad or anything like that, because I really don't think that, but um, you know what I mean.
There's a lot of stupid people getting fucking. Yeah. It's like, it's like that snail machine which politely melts the snail for its goo. They're getting melted for their goo. It's fucked up. Go look that up if you want to know what I'm talking about. It's for cosmetics. Anyway, goodbye. Have a nice day. So, want to do something cool? Who are you? What are you? Beyond your body, beyond your experience, beyond your thoughts, who are you? What are you?